Hey there, this is Debbie Wright with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and I'm here to talk to you today about earnest money. You found your dream home. Great. Now it's time to fill the offer out so you can submit it to the seller. And on the first page of the contract, it's going to be the earnest money area. Now you're going to have to decide how much you're going to put down. Most of the time, it's about 1% of the purchase price, but get with your agent and see what they recommend. Once you make the offer and it's accepted by the seller, uh, then you're going to move into making the deposit of that earnest money. Uh, you're going to drop it off or your agent is going to drop it off to a brokerage or to a title company or to an attorney, whoever is managing the transaction or is going to be the escrow agent for the transaction. That money is going to immediately be deposited, so please make sure you have the funds available. Um, after that, um, they're going to be held in escrow by that neutral third party until it's time to close and then those funds will be applied to your purchase. Here's a little tip for you. If you want to make an even stronger offer, go ahead and fill out your contract to state that you will give another earnest money deposit after the inspection period. This actually puts you to the top of the list in a competitive situation. Sellers love to see that. They love to see that you're committed to the transaction. Um, and that deposit can be made after your due diligence or inspection period and you've agreed to accept the property and you've either negotiated repairs or, or the house is in great condition and you would just want to move forward. Um, so that second earnest money deposit could actually differentiate, differentiate you uh, from your competition. So it's something to consider. Okay, can you lose your money? Yes, you can. <laughs> Make sure that your realtor has explained to you exactly what the situations are uh, that you could face in losing those funds. And they all boil down to buyer default. And you need to understand what that means. What does it mean buyer default? Typically it means um, this scenario is usually what plays out. Not always, but just so you understand. You're moving toward the closing table, the inspections have been done, financing has been approved, and all of a sudden the house that you really, really wanted is back on the market. And you're like, oh no, this was just my second favorite. Well then you're like, well, what, 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 what can we do? Can we cancel? Well, you can, and the seller is going to confiscate your earnest money um, as damages. Is that worth it to you? Well, that's a discussion that you need to have with your realtor and figure out if it is. If we're talking about your true dream home, then it may be worth something to consider. Um, either way, having the advice of a professional is key at this point. And it doesn't cost you anything to have someone represent you. A realtor representing the buyer is typically paid by the seller, at least in the state of Florida. There are some instances where they are um, not, and you would have to discuss that situation with your particular realtor, but for the most part, compensation is made by the seller. So if you have any questions, if you want to leave a comment below, like me, please reach out. You can always call, text, email, Facebook message me. I respond. So I look forward to hearing from you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.